Hello everyone, Emby here, and welcome back to new video. In this one, I'm going to be taking a look at a Feraligator budget deck from the set Temporal Forces. So out of all the decks from Temporal Forces, I was adamant that Feraligator would be the deck for me. I didn't care about any other deck, I just wanted to play this deck and I wanted to try it out because, honestly, there just hasn't really been any single prize stage 2s that have been that good. I think the closest we got to was like Tyranitar from Paldea Evolved, which was even then a bit meh, and I couldn't get that to work even for a YouTube video, so I was like, okay, fine. We'll just wait and see if Fralligator is any good. And to be honest, I have very mixed feelings on this deck, so we'll just go over the card first, and then I'll talk about the pros and cons of the deck. So Fralligator is 108 HP Stage 2 Water type, which means we can use cards like Irida, which is very cool. And it has the ability Torrential Heart, which says once you turn, you may put 5 damage counters on Fralligator, and if you do, during this turn, Fralligator's attacks do plus 120 more damage. And then for 2 Water Energy, Giant Wave does 160 damage, but during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Giant Wave. So effectively, the 160 becomes 280, which is fantastic because it KOs stuff like V-Stars, which is great. Now, you could use Maximum Belt to KO, you know, like much bigger Pokemon, but I've not included Maximum Belt in this list because I wanted to just focus on a more budget-friendly variant. I'm not playing any A specs, nothing like that. I also try to avoid playing Palkia at first. I'll probably try out a Palkia variant at some point, but Palkia is a V-Star. It's going to cost a bit, so I didn't want to, you know, focus on Palkia at first at least. But Fralligator, a very cool card, and my feelings on this deck so far have been, it's okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's okay. I think this deck is aggressively decent to an agree. To a degree, you know, it's okay, but the problem this deck has, and I think it we you know we all saw this coming really, is that it's a stage two that needs two water energy, which is a huge problem. Now I'm gonna go over in this deck how I actually charge up energy without Palkia, but needing two energy is a big killer for this deck because it just means that you constantly have to be either using manual attachments or you have to be using stuff like EXP Share and Turbo Energize. And for me, that's the biggest issue with this deck. It's not the damage output, which I think is fantastic. I think more stage 2 single price Pokemon should be doing this kind of damage. But it's the 2 water energy that really hurts this for me. So it's 2 energy. It's really annoying. I know it sounds really weird. You know, only 2 basic energy. That should be very easy to pay for. But considering you need one of these out every single turn to deal damage, or, I mean, you can use Croconore if you really have to, to deal 30 damage and then allow you to switch into a Mimikyu, which is fantastic. But, you know, most turns you'll want to be attaching with Fralligator. Attacking, rather. So, yeah, Giant Wave. Fantastic. However, you still need the two energy. Now, in the 10 or so games that I've played with this deck, some of the losses I was against Great Tusk Mill and two Snorlax decks. Now, I'm not playing enough switching cards in this deck. I play one switch and two escape boards. In fact, I, wait, are they called escape boards? Or are they, what are they called? Rescue board. Yeah, I keep getting escape boards, the one from Sun and Moon era. Escape board is, yeah, that's the one. Rescue board. So I'm playing rescue board, and why I'm playing rescue board is I decided that B-Barrel was too much of a liability, and it's basically why I decided to switch over to Comfy. I know a lot of players will see this and go, oh, Comfy, I hate Lost Zone, all the rest of it. But, like, Comfy is a major help to this deck. It's a lot better than you think, and it's way better than B-Barrel in testing. So, yeah, cool. If you want to play B-Barrel, that's fine, but you will need to play, like, two or three switching cards just to make sure you can move it. And then at that point, you probably have to eat into other aspects of the deck. Like, you probably have to remove Mimikyu at that point. So, yeah. B-Barrel's just a wee bit weird. I'll probably play B-Barrel again when I go back to, like, Palkia, but for now, I think Comfy seems like the better choice. So, yeah. Comfy. Nice for draw power. You can also find all these basics with Buddy Buddy Poffin, because we're not playing Radiant Greninja. So, yeah, that's another cool aspect. But, yeah. Comfy. Also, why I'm not playing Radiant Greninja is we don't actually play enough energy in the deck to kind of get away with it. Like, I am playing two Super Rod, but the thing is with this deck, whenever I have energy in my hand, I'm usually attaching it. You know, I'm usually either attaching it or I'm waiting till until the following turn to attach it, assuming my opponent doesn't play an Iono. I just can't see a world where if you play less than 10 energy, you can get away with playing Radiant Greninja. Maybe you can, and I think if we ever got like a reprint of Aquapatch or, you know, Raihan, of course, 
then I think Raiding Greninja could be more viable in this deck. But to be honest, I don't think it helps you out as enough, enough as it should for discarding a basic energy. I know that sounds really weird, but this format is so volatile to the point where even just drawing two cards on a basic sometimes isn't enough for a deck. And this deck needs quite a lot to get going anyway. So yeah, you have to be careful with management. I did make room for a mana fee. So, you know, for all the people who were wondering, like, where's Manaphy from my list? Because it's a bit weird that I've been, like, avoiding including this card in my deck. But it was mainly for, like, Rapid Strike Ushfru, but I guess now post-rotation, you still have to deal with Rain and Greninja. This won't stop, um, oh, what's it called? The the new Iron Crown that does, like, 50 damage to two Pokemon. This won't actually stop that card, which is quite scary. But this will still stop Rain and Greninja, so... I guess you have a slightly easier time against Radiant, Radiant Greninja decks, and that, that would allow you to hopefully defeat Chen Pao quite easily. So, yeah, that's quite cool. But yeah, Mimikyu. Nice option to have. I used to play Luminous Energy in this deck, so you could actually attack with Mimikyu, but decided it was just a bit too niche, and, you know, you had to actually find Luminous Energy in the first place, so it just felt a bit weird. I might try that again in the future. There's so many different ways you can play for Alligator, but... Luminous Energy attacking with Mimikyu seemed a bit weird, and it doesn't synergize very well with EXP share. So yeah, I'm not attacking with this guy, but it's just quite nice to throw into the active spot. 7 HP, retreat cost of 1, just means you can use Buddy Poffin as well as the Rescue Board card, which is fantastic. So a very nice utility option. What I have considered is the new Relincanth, the one allows you to account, uh, what am I saying? copy one of your previous Evolution's attacks. So you could actually use Rallencanth to allow Fralligator to copy Reverse Thrust. So in, on those turns where maybe your opponent doesn't actually kill your Fralligator, you you know you can't obviously use Giant Wave two turns in a row. So you could then copy Reverse Thrust, or you know maybe even Big Bite if you really wanted to, and go for like some cheap cheeky like stall tactic, I guess. But yeah, Rallencanth hasn't made its way into this list just yet, but definitely an option that you could consider. But yeah, that's kind of it to say about all there is to say about the Pokemon. You know, 90 HP is cool and everything, but there's no level ball, so yeah, it's whatever. But yeah, we can kind of move on to the trainers. Now, I am playing for Irida. I know Irida is not the cheapest supporter because it was only around in one set, but it's still just kind of a, a quality of life change, really. You could play for other supporters. Uh, what I would say at that point is just play like Cynthia's Ambition or some kind of consistency option. Uh, because we're already maxing out our Arvin count as well. <laughs> we're already playing full Arvin for Arida. Sounds excessive, but the fact that Arida can't actually find any tool cards is really annoying because I'm playing six tool cards in this deck, correct? Yeah, six tool cards. So having Arida just is, is a nice option, but Arida is mainly here because it can find us a Fraligator and an item. So aka Fraligator Rare Candy, which is cool. Arvin can find us tool cards, but Arvin won't be able to find us a Fraligator necessarily because we, I only play Ultra Ball, I don't play Aromatic Incense. And aside from Ultra Ball, there isn't really many ways of consistently finding Stage 2 Evolution Pokemon, so having to rely on Ultra Ball, I guess, is a bit annoying. But I will talk about some of the other trainers in this deck, like EXP Share, for example, is 100% worth it. <laughs> you know, Without this card, I don't think this deck would really be able to do anything. I'm only playing one Gust Effect, and that's Counter Capture. Of course, if this deck was, you know, not as cheap, and we were not, like, playing a budget deck, then I would definitely recommend Prime Catcher in place of Counter Capture. It's just a strict upgrade, basically. So, yeah, play Prime Catcher over Counter Catcher, unless you want to play, like, Maximum Belt, I guess. But, yeah, I would say Prime Catcher probably is just better, actually. But, yeah, Prime Catcher is also just really good, because we have an option to put a rescue board on a Mimikyu or a Totodile and then use it as a pivot. So that's quite nice. Also playing three copies of a new Buddy Buddy Poffin to allow us to find two basic Pokemon with 70 HP or less, which is all our basics in the deck, which is very cool. Also playing three Nest Ball. I mean, you could argue that why am I playing three Nest Ball and three Buddy Buddy Poffin? Uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a weird decision, to be honest. Like, you could just play four Poffin, two Nest Ball. But I was toying around with a list that was playing Red and Greninja at one point, so I was like, oh, I'll just keep three S ball. But yeah, you could definitely just remove an S ball for another Poffin. But yeah, that's where that's at. Two Iono and then two Research are the other supporters in this deck. I know Research is a bit of a weird one in like a rare candy deck, but to be honest, I think Research is better without B Barrel, you know, because with Comfy, you're finding one card essentially each turn, you're finding one extra card with Comfy. So having that burst option with research just feels a lot better. I know we do have a lot of important resources we don't really want to discard, like Super Rod. 
but you know, still having research is quite a nice burst option. I do like research, but yeah. Also, I guess our, uh, I didn't think about this actually, but Aruzo could find you three evolution Pokemon, but yeah, it seems a bit slow, but yeah. Also, Atticus is actually an interesting draw option. I've just realized this. Maybe Atticus with Brute Bonnet could be quite funny in this deck, but yeah. Shuffle draw seven with uh, Brute Bonnet, but yeah, interesting. The other major card that we haven't really talked about, aside from like Earthen Vessel, which is just there so we can Arvin and Irida for energy, basically, is going to be Turbo Energize. I have been trying out Turbo Evolution, which I think would definitely be worth it if you're going like the Rallencanth route. But I did find that Turbo Energize was a massive help to this deck because turn one going second, you can just put energy on your active Pokemon and then get two more energy out the deck, which just seems great. You know, it's just great for putting energy into play. And we do need a lot of energy with this deck. And, you know, I'm playing nine energy, one copy of reverse energy. Again, if you're really like playing cheaps and you want to play an A spec that's not that expensive, you could play like Neo Upper Energy, which would of course pay for two waters, which is great. But you know, at that point, I'd probably like rather just playing Master Ball, but yeah, just an option for you to guys to consider. But yeah, this has been Fraligator, uh, the Bane of Hook. So do let me know what you think about this deck down below. Hopefully you, you enjoy the game after this. And yeah, thank you for watching. I don't actually know if it's worth getting another Pokemon down or not. I'm kind of tempted to just hold the hand. But at the same time, I've got a feeling I'll need to Iono next turn. So, okay, maybe I've got the rare candy combo in hand. So maybe I should just hold. Yeah, I'm just going to hold. We'll see what happens. Now, my opponent is playing a fire deck. It looks like they're playing Arcanine, which, okay, I'm sure. <laughs> Arcanine seems to be really popular for some reason. I guess it's one of the... Okay, we've got some very serious lag there. What was that? Is that an EXP share? Yeah, we've got some... Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Arcanine seems to be really popular, despite Charizard being a free deck now. And that's a Misfortune Sisters. Okay, what is my opponent playing? And what did they discard? TCG Live, you've got to start showing me what you discard. A Switch and a Super Rod. Okay. I mean, losing the Super Rod is quite painful, actually. However... What we can do is, okay, that was a good top deck. So we will be able to get a rare candy combo off, I guess. So we can go Arvin. And then we can just get another TM that we don't need. So I think what I'll do is, yeah, I mean, we could discard an escape board, actually, and save Energize for later. I think I will do that, actually, just in case we have to use TM Energize. So then I'll play an Ultra Ball, discarding Ultra Ball Rescue Board. We do need to Iono next turn anyway, so may as well do that. So go get the Feraligator. And unfortunately, we don't have anything else in hand, but we can find Comfy quite easily. We do play, well, we don't play a Switch anymore because it was discarded, but... We will get a KO at least. We will get some prize cards. We don't need to use Torrential Heart because we're already doing 320 with weakness. So that's fantastic. Even if we weren't hanging for weakness on this Entei, we could still KO at this turn. So that's a plus side at least. They will be able to conserve an energy. So if they actually have a Mela supporter or like base and switch, then that will be extremely problematic and they will be able to retaliate with a KO with Arcanine, which is a bit scary. Our prizes weren't brilliant either, but we'll see. We will at least be able to conserve an energy, though, if they do go ahead and, you know, KO this for Alligator here. So they do get a Larry. I can't remember what Larry actually does. It's something like flip a coin of heads, search your deck for two evolution Pokemon or two basic Pokemon or something. What, what does it What does it do? I guess we're about to find out. Tails, what does Tails mean? Um, Tails, search your deck for a basic. All right, so if Heads, he searches his deck for any two Pokemon, but if he gets Tails, he just has to get a basic. So a pretty risky supporter. My opponent will attach an energy to NTV. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so they are going after my 
toe to dial. This is actually quite annoying because even though we'll be able to poke NTV, although actually, okay, so this is quite tricky because we can retreat and KO them with Fralligator, which in theory sounds fantastic, right? But if we do that, the chances of us getting killed by an Arcanine next turn are pretty high. And I'm slightly bothered he's able to do that. So that's what I'm kind of afraid of. So I'm just thinking, is that really what I want to do? Unfortunately, we only play Ultra Ball as a way of finding Pokemon. So we might be a bit of a risk here if we, you know... Can't really find something else next turn, but I will go ahead and Arvin. I won't take a Rare Candy. I will take a Nest Ball, though, in case we have to put Mimikyu in play. So what I will do is get Nest Ball for res and Rescue Board. I could have taken an EXP share, actually, if there was one left in deck. And that might have been a good idea, but we'll get Nest Ball for Mimikyu. I won't take the Comfy. I don't think we need Comfy at this point in the game. So the reason why, and I've probably explained this in the deck profile, the reason why I've opted to move away from using the barrel in this deck is simply a lack of deck space and needing to allocate Ultra Balls to finding stuff like Fragator. I know in theory you should be able to use Arvin and Irida to find Fragator, and then Ultra Ball is more or less exclusively, you know, for finding the barrel. But the problem I found was that getting the barrel set up as well as Fralligator was actually a chore. And when a lot of players realized that I was only playing one or two switching cards, they would just start bossing the barrel and using that to set up. And then they would just play a boss and a switch when they, you know, finally got me to set up a Fralligator on the bench. So, yeah, I feel like the barrel is more of a risk than it's worth. If we ever get like a floatstone reprint or a, an item card that lets you retreat stage ones. But yeah, I think this game is pretty much over. It's been a pretty boring game actually, to be fair. But yeah, it's not been super great. I kind of thought my opponent would retaliate with a KO. And that would at least force me to actually find a combo. Because to be fair, if I had been forced to promote Mimikyu. And then, you know, say for example... Actually, I'll get an energy down just in case. But, you know, say, for example, I had to promote Mimikyu there after got a KO, and I whiffed a KO. You know, say for argument's sake, that's what happened. Then, for example, I would be in a position where I'd have to start manually attaching energies, and at that point, my opponent could be like, oh, well, now I'm just going to boss, basically, boss this for alligator after I promote Mimikyu. So that's another kind of big problem, I think, with this deck so far. Oh, of course. I'm an idiot. I can't use that attack next turn. Oops. Well, I can't retreat it anyway, so... And... Okay, so I kind of actually need to get the energy down. That's kind of important. So we'll have to discard one of these, which sucks. I think we also lost a super odd question mark. Oh, it's not going to let me see. I think we lost one. So yeah, that's just me getting a bit too confident of my own good. And yeah, so we are about to lose one of these bad boys. And I will attach an energy. I could pay the retreat cost, but I think that's just a bit pointless. So this, you know, it's just a bit pointless because I need to like keep the energy in play anyway. So I could deal damage to myself, which just seems extremely irrelevant and pointless. <laughs> I don't really know why you'd ever want to do that unless it's to modify your damage. But, you know, it's kind of cool that it buffs any attacks anyway. So if you were to play like a Relencant, for example, onto the bench, you could then copy Reverse Thrust for like 150 and then switch into a Mimikyu, which is quite cool. That's something I've definitely thought about trying out, but not just yet. So my opponent will boss, unfortunately. And okay, so they didn't have anything anyway. They do remove Mimikyu, which is a pain, but I think at this point it's, well, it's not over, but... We're in a very good position anyway, so I think we'll be fine for the rest of the game. I don't want to play an Iono because we don't have anything in hand, really. I could play a Super Rod just to get back a Crocodile, which I'm kind of tempted to do. 
Although this is our last super rod, so I might actually just wait. And yeah, we'll do giant wave. My opponent might be waiting to play their own Iono, which is a good point, but we'll have to see, really. There's just so many different combos and cards in this format right now, it's kind of difficult to predict what our opponents can do. On the one hand, it's creative and really fun, but wait, why is it? Yeah. Why is it not letting me select a price card? Oh, you've got to be joking. Really? Really? Are you serious? It's worked all day, and then now, when it matters the most, it's not going to let me select one. Okay, it did. Thank goodness. Oh, I was about to lose my mind there. I really don't know about this game sometimes. It just... It's just not the same as T.S. Joe. That's just, that's just, I know we've said that enough but already, but yeah. It's just not the same game, is it? Okay, Cynthia's Ambition for two cards, that's fine. Energy on Growlithe. They really need to evolve at this point. Otherwise, they're not really going to be able to stay much in the game. But yeah, this is what I will say about Mimikyu, is I think you really do need Mimikyu, not just to like wall out certain decks, but also just to buy yourself a bit of time. You know, I thought about Cleffa, but Cleffa is giving up a prize card. It will help you draw cards, of course, but, you know, it is a bit of a risk. And we won't be able to attack this turn, but I can just bench Mimikyu. At this point, we don't really have to worry about setting up another one of these dudes. I mean, I think if my opponent can take four prize cards, then they just win anyway, so... What I will do is Super Rod, get this guy back. I won't get Mimikyu back. I will take the energy, though. And then we'll just pass, I guess. I don't play more than one Switch. They did discard it earlier on, so... Yeah, I guess it's just a pass. So they will be able to KO for Alligator with Arcanine. Usually, like most decks in Standard, can just want to KO for Alligator anyway, so it's not, like, that big of a deal realistically but we'll see what they have they might have like charizard which is admittedly a complete pain because i'm not actually sure how to deal with charizard because well we can do it kill charizard but at the same time well i guess we could like feed the mimikyu yeah we could go like i remove the luminous energy which was maybe a bit silly but i could feed them mimikyu and make them boss around it how many boss do they have left, do we think? It's hard to know. They have one boss in the discard pile, so chances are they play more than one boss. They are going to retreat here. 110% they are going to retreat, which is definitely worth it in their position. If they evolve to Arcanine and KO me, then... I mean, in many ways, I'd rather they got the Arcanine off Bill's transfer. Yeah, so they pay the retreat cost. Really annoying. Hope this game was in the bag, but of course not. Be hilarious if we lose this game at this point, I think. And yeah, we'll just put the energy on that boy. And then, I mean, I might as well, right? Might as well keep the energy in play. And then we go up here. Although, yeah, I think we just promote this anyway, because we can reverse thrust into Mimikyu. Be really frustrating, though. Okay, that's not a useful card. We will play an Iono. This is one of those instances where maybe, like, Cynthia's Ambition could be... Okay, that's a good card for next turn, but not for this turn. Reverse thrust. 30 damage. Which is quite annoying because 280 plus 30 doesn't get us to 330. I really don't know why they had to give this thing 330 HP. That's really silly of them. But yeah, 30 damage. We'll see if our opponent has the boss. We did Iona them, so... I guess it's kind of likely that they do. It would be really annoying, actually, if they... Do they have Rare Candy Pidgeot for boss? Do not do this to me, please. 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 Okay, thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. They still probably have another boss, though, which is... 
I mean, this could be Arvin for Palpad, and then they do have another boss at that point, which is very annoying. So, okay, that's a switch. Interesting. I don't know why they need switch, though. Yeah, why do they need switch? I guess to switch out of this and attack with something else, but yeah. I'm not sure what they're going for here. Maybe they, they're like tunnel visioning and they only care about KOing Mimikyu, but tunnel visioning is not really a thing, is it? But yeah, KOing Mimikyu is what they are probably thinking of doing. Basin doesn't help them. I think I removed my only boss's orders because it was too inconsistent. I was just like, okay, we have to just play great catcher and we're going to fall behind on prizes anyway. So this is maybe where you need one boss anyway. Yeah, I might just remove Iono for Cynthia's Ambition and Boss. That might make more sense, actually. Okay, so we do go back to our turn. What do we draw? It's an Arvin. Is Arvin useful? I don't think Arvin is useful. Is Arvin useful? No, I don't think it is. We just research here. Reverse energy. That's not useful. Although... Yeah, I guess it is useful to attack with. So that we have Rare Candy, Irida. Okay, so... Okay, this is the plan. We're going to have to hit Charizard. So I pay the energy sheet cost. Um, I could pop in for more stuff out of the deck, but I think we'll be fine. I don't think the damage is relevant here, so I will just do damage to myself. And I will just hit this thing for as much damage as humanly possible. Yeah, there we go. So 310, so close. So we know that card is a switch, so they will switch into something. What they switch into depends, we don't know. They will KO our Fraligator. We do have at least one or two more in deck though, so that should be good. And as long as one isn't prized, question mark? No, we should have at least one more. Yeah, because I play four, so. Even if the last one is prized, we do have Irida Rare Candy, so. In theory, we have game. In theory. As long as my opponent didn't have another Charizard there, then I think we would have probably lost anyway, because we wouldn't have been able to deal with Charizards at that point. But Okay, a switch. Into Pidgeot. Okay, what else? Zisu. I mean, Pidgeot doesn't really help them because we can one it kill Pidgeot. That's one of the, the nicer things about Fralligator. Although, to be fair, we can't actually kill Pidgeot in our next turn. Because, because yeah, we would have to wait another turn with Giant Wave. But I think my opponent is ignoring that anyway. And not going to wait. Okay, they're not going to wait. That's cool. So we will conserve the energy. Just in case, you know, we've whiffed. I think that is game, question mark. So Charizard definitely gave them a little bit of the edge there in the end. But thankfully, we were able to bounce back. Thankfully. You can see how close games are with this deck, even though we're hitting for weakness for most of it. But yeah, I don't know what to make of Fralligator in truth. Because on the one hand, it just feels great sometimes. You know, it just feels fantastic. And then in other instances, it feels clunky as anything, even with Irida. And needing two energy per Fralligator just feels really bad sometimes. I don't know. It just feels bad. But I definitely want to try out several different builds of this deck. And I think I'll try out, like, the Palkia build next. Palkia seems good. I just can't really justify Palkia just yet because, you know, it's Palkia. It's not cheap. It's not going to be the cheapest deck. But, yeah. Spin out power. Thank you for watching.